Three years ago, Australian Wool Innovation launched a massive publicity campaign with a big international push with Europe as its main target. The campaign is continuing, but the focus has shifted to one of the world's most rapidly modernising economies. China is set to overtake the United States as the number one consumer of luxury goods. And AWI wants ultra-fine wool to be part of it. Martin Cudahy reports from Tasmania. A woolshed in Tasmania's Midlands is not exactly the first place you'd expect to find Chinese fashion designers. But there's nothing standoffish about these two who are keen to get into the yards and handle the fleece. So you have a look here. Mm. Give her a kiss. <laughs> she got some teeth? Designers Mark Kai and Ban Shou Zhuo dress some of China's most well-heeled women. And now they're learning about where the wool comes from. When we're in China, they, they have no idea as to where, where the wool comes from. So to actually bring them to the farm, to see the animals, to meet the people who They're actually not, grow the fibre, the farmers, and put them at the forefront of this story is, is really compelling and really interesting to, to the Chinese market, particularly the Chinese female consumer who is looking for more than just a brand. <laughs> Everything here, so including the natural landscape and also the sheep, is so natural and pure. So when I do my um, design, these are all my inspiration. Australian Wool Innovation has brought six designers to Tasmania as part of its aggressive push into the wealthy Chinese market. In partnership with the China Business Network, they're filming a documentary that charts the origins of high-end fashion fibre. A little like Red Meat's story of paddock to plate, this campaign follows fleece from woolshed to catwalk. And today, they're at Georgie and Hamish Wallace's place. They're lovely young fellas and great to see what they're doing with wool and I was so thrilled for them to be here to see how we grow our wool and, um, you know, so that they can go home and, and tell their story. And uh, I think it's very important that they, they do that, yeah. I have never been to a place like this before. There's such a big farm and a big scale. What impressed me most is the relationship between Georgie and uh, her sheep. There is just a lot of care and love and harmony. It's important to our design because we respect life, no matter it's human beings or animals. However, some of the story might just get lost in translation. I said, you know, one of the first things I look for is I look in the sheep mouth to, to check its teeth and meaning you know that's got all its teeth and um, they were meaning they thought that I meant whether their teeth were clean or not so <laughs> I can tell you I don't I don't go and uh, brush floss all the sheep's teeth every day <laughs> yeah so it was quite entertaining you began to care about the way you dressed somehow you always chose wool Woolmark has been peddling its wares to the pointy end of the market since it was formed in the mid-1960s. But it almost disappeared into obscurity before AWI took over Woolmark four years ago. It relaunched the brand the next year with a big push into Europe, creating the Australian Merino Wool Prize for emerging fashion designers. The inaugural winner was 30-year-old Chu Hao from Shanghai. The win gave him international exposure and $100,000 worth of support from AWI. I think it's a good chance to get to, you know, present myself, present my work and in front of the people all over the world. The aim was to build long-term relationships with designers. Today, Chu Hao is still working with AWI in China. We work closely with Chu Hao. At the moment, he is a boutique designer, so he doesn't quite have the volume that resonates with this particular program. However, he has been shown our wool lab uh, and he's looking to source some fabrics from that as well. So our Shanghai team are working very closely with him currently as well. Understandably, it's good news for AWI. The industry has had its fair share of bad publicity in recent years. The mulesing debate dominated coverage for years. 
But AWI and Woolmark have worked hard to project a positive image. The Woolmark Gold Standard was launched last year focusing on fashions for men. On Savile Row in London, Chinese businessmen were fitted with ultra-fine merino suits. From the campaign last year, our partners in, uh, reported back on a 15% increase in their, their wool sales into, into China. This year, the partners on signing on to come on and, and be part of this campaign have committed to a 5% increase in the first year in their wool consumption and 30% next autumn winter as well. So it's quite a big commitment from them, but I think that shows their, their passion for, for the fibre and for the industry. China has become the main focus for AWI simply because of the growth in the luxury market. It will soon overtake the US as the biggest consumer of high-end products in the world. Growth in female luxury spending alone increased by 22% in the three years to 2010. Male spending increased as well, but by less than half that amount. AWI wants to tap into that growth, so the focus this year is on what women want. I feel like I will make a lot of beautiful clothes because uh, um, as a designer you need to be sensitive to things uh, that you have seen. So uh, not just the ship but also like the cloud here and the beautiful scenery. So there are a lot of ex uh, inspiration for me. Has that been a real shift in the Chinese market to want to know more about what's behind the brand? Most definitely and in the female luxury consumer market that's definitely the case. Uh, from our studies it's that, um, that they're a lot more educated these days about, about what they're buying and they will spend money on products that, that have a backstory and that's what we're trying to tell here today. The Tassie trip is an important part of that backstory and an important part of educating the Chinese about what goes into producing first-class fleece. It's important to let consumers know. It's also uh, for designers it's important because before I come to here, uh, even myself, I'm uh, not very familiar with all these uh, things like uh, farmland, how do you take care of sheep and how do you produce wool. There's a lot of effort behind and also the natural uh, environment here. There's the harmony that I can feel between the people and also the sheep. So in terms of this, like uh, eco-friendly, is also a big trend. Georgie Wallace runs Trefusis in Tasmania's Midlands. She reckons AWI is on the right track. I'm more than happy to see them uh, direct our marketing money to projects like this with the Chinese designers because, you know, if it has some outcomes, um, and I think um, most growers would feel the same, that if you know, if, it, if it's well-directed campaign um, and it has outcomes, which means, you know, that we're selling more wool and for a bit more money, um, I, think, I don't think you'd get any arguments. She also believes wool's sheer versatility should be pushed a lot harder. I think a lot of young people think it's, you know, it's wearing that off awful scratchy jumper that, you know, grandma knitted me in the winter time. It's not like, I mean, it's very trans-seasonal now. You can wear wool all year round. I mean, they can, they can weave this type of wool to, you know, as thin as um, any cotton. So I think that's really important that we get that message across. So what are you looking for? Well, we're looking for ni nice lengths. Georgie Wallace is in charge of the ultra-fine merino wool program on Trefusis, but like so many others in this area, drought has taken its toll on their flock. They normally run 22,000 sheep on more than 7,000 hectares, but that number nearly halved during the lean years. Since um, spring of 2009, we've had some really good springs and autumns since then, so we've gradually starting to build our numbers back up. I think we're up to about 16,000 sheep again now, but um, we've still got a lot more capacity to grow that again. So there's capacity for trefusis to grow, and that means they'll be producing more wool. Considering China's insatiable demand, that's a good yarn in anyone's language.